Waylon is absolutely perfect. And X11 is going to kidnap your dog. Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly, Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux and open source. I'm Vin, that's Jill, and hello, that's hello. you. You're probably listening, but hey, all the super special people watching this live right now over on Twitch. How you doing? How you doing? We got a lot to talk about this week, but Jill has uh, <laughs> went through a long, detailed explanation telling me about the awesomeness that is Timu. <laughs> yeah, so Timu is a great, great place to get lots of uh, pink and and penguiny things, and also keyboards that I've shown off here on the show. <laughs> and this is my newest one. It's so cute. It's a pink plush penguin. And it's <laughs> licking a pink popsicle. And this was literally about $2. And on Amazon, the same one was 20 So <laughs> that is the savings. <laughs> so what you got to do is buy more and sell them on Amazon for $15. <laughs> yeah, I know. People are probably doing that, too. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so it's just been, for me, it's been really cool because I, you know, collect all kinds of unique keyboards, pink and colorful and computer parts and stuffed penguins. So that's, uh, you know, perfect uh, for the, that market is perfect on Timu. <laughs> so. I love it. Right on. And you get it under a week, which is nice, which is different from AliExpress, <laughs> which can be, you know, a month or two months. For the same item. Well, you so. got to do what the other YouTubers are doing, doing the uh, all Timu unboxings. Yeah. <laughs> PC builds and. Yep. I don't know. I, I've I've had my entire Timu experience. We did it in the pre-show. I clicked on a thing. I'm like, hey, what's that? It's like, hey, create an account. And I'm like, close tab. <laughs> yeah. On, on mobile, again, you just use your Google account. There's if you no go way in the way. world I'd give that company my mobile data from Google. <laughs> Like, nope. Um, but maybe you like that. Um, I, I think just like in general, any website, and this is nothing against Timu whatsoever. This is against the practice as a whole. Because we've all run into it at some point, haven't we? When you're yeah. just trying to find something, you're like, hey, what's that? And it's like, hey, you need to create an account. I know. It's annoying. It is annoying. Oof. You got anything else going on this week, Joe? Oh, boy. Well, I had a lot of fun playing the Trackmania maps yesterday during Except our Trackmania. Except for that one. <laughs> yeah, practice stream. <laughs> yeah, I'll get through it though. I did see the, I did see the final goal. <laughs> no, oh, you map. got through it. You, or, there was a, we got was one that. that, the... that that's oh no, the one I did. The, the one with the crazy overhead. Yeah, I did. I did. That we were all like, ah, this is impossible to drive. It's like I hate this. Then Joe got through it. I was like, yeah, I got through it. Yes, <laughs> I did. <laughs> it's pretty fun. Come hang out with us on Tuesdays and Fridays if you get a chance. If you're looking for a nice crippling addiction. If you got Amazon Prime, it doesn't cost you anything. Just give us those Bezo boxes, a Twitch sub, link that up to our Discord. Come say hello. We even get like live voice chat going on. We'll be back at that on Friday. Nice group of miscreants. Mm -hmm. It's play really a great group. With. And it's fun. It, yeah. it, it's a good time. And <laughs> uh, what have I done? Oh, right. I found something um, earlier this week because you know I love mechanical keyboards. Yes. <laughs> Not. <laughs> I do. I mean, they're, they're awesome. They allow you to make noise and, you know. I really don't like mechanical keyboards. You know what? I don't have a problem. <laughs> okay, here's, here's my feeling on mechanical keyboards. As long as I don't have to deal with them, they're great. You do you. But maybe. Maybe you're in a work environment, a cubicle environment, and uh, the person next to you, the person across from you, has one of those super... Which ones are the loudest, Jill? Oh, the blues. The blues. They yeah. got some blue switches in there, and they're like, ah, they won't be quiet, and you can't block them out. You can't do anything. And, you know, you're, you're thinking to yourself, like, well, I'm not going to buy one to try to annoy them, because you don't have to anymore. No. no. I ran across a project <laughs> that will allow any keyboard... To play clicky clacky sounds anytime nice. you press the key. So what you can do, it's even got, you know, it's right there, buckle spring. 
go ahead and install it. It's right there for Debian, Void Linux, FreeBSD, even Arch, up and running. And the reason I like this is because then you can get some nice speakers, name it right back at them. Just. <laughs> yep. Because <laughs> they're going to love it. They love the clicky sound. You'll find out. Oh, they'll yeah. find be like, no, I only like it when I make the clicky sound. Like, uh huh. <laughs> I love it too, but I don't like to irritate people with it. So. <laughs> oh, nobody likes the sound, though. And like, I mean, you think about um, the one, I, the example I always like to bring up with uh, mechanical keyboards is how quickly do you get irritated when you're listening to somebody's uh, live stream or podcast and you start hearing the keyboard? Mm hmm. Yeah, it's so annoying. Yeah. Like, I can't stop that. I'm trying to, like, exactly. Yeah. Like, nobody likes that sound unless you're typing. And if you're doing it all by yourself, not bugging anybody. But yeah, go, go install Buckle Spring and engage in clicky warfare. Yeah. <laughs> Have some fun with it. Uh, yeah. Another thing, you know, we talked about that Zima board last week, right? Oh, yeah. So cool. So, so have you picked one up yet, Ben? Got pretty close. Got pretty close. I didn't get a chance after the show, but it's stuck in my mind because we talked about it again at the beginning of the show on Saturday because I wanted to tell Jordan about it because I know Jordan's always interested in, like, you know, NAS type devices, right? Mm hmm. And I'm like, hey, check this out. And it was pretty nice. And after the show, I'm like, you know what? Fine. I'm just going to go ahead and order one. And if you don't know, x86 fanless. It's got a PCI Express slot on it. It's got two SATA ports on the back. 140 bucks. Okay, fine. Fine, you got me. <laughs> I got to order it. This is where I... I, I you, you can let me know, Jill. Am I being irrational? Feel free to leave a comment on the YouTube video mm -hmm. if you agree or disagree. Put it in the cart. And it says, hey, would you like to add a power adapter? <laughs> <laughs> this doesn't come with a power adapter for 145 bucks. All right. How much you want for your power? You want $15 for a power adapter. Oh, boy. <laughs> That's where they make a little extra money. <laughs> $15 for a power And they, they have a nice little paragraph. They're like, well, we understand you can just go to Amazon and get this exact same power adapter. Okay. For six it's not bucks. Not the official one. <laughs> but you see, we bought it from Amazon for six dollars, and we would like you to pay fifteen for it. Yeah. I hadn't ordered it yet. Okay. That stopped me right there. I was like, "That." I found it. <laughs> you would think that it came with the power supply. I'm surprised. You would too. <laughs> Now, this is, this is where it like borderlines on some type of rationality, because like when I order a Raspberry Pi or something like that, I always get an official power supply with it. I don't like doing guesswork with power supplies, right? Because mm -hmm. there's a billion up. They are right about that, and you never exactly. know who's going to make one. Yeah. Even the ones I found on Amazon, I'm like, you know what? I'll pay an extra 30, 40 bucks. Not 30 bucks, let's be honest. Uh, mm -hmm. If I can find somebody that's already got one matched pair that's here in the States, I can get it the next day. Nobody's even selling more power supplies here. Mm. Zima, I like your product. I think it's interesting. It's very compelling. But I'm not giving you $15 for a power adapter when I know full well you did not pay $15 for that power adapter. Like, not even close. That's like a 400% markup on that power adapter. Yeah. Maybe I'm being irrational. Who knows? <laughs> Who I'm a little knows? surprised that it's not USB-C or just USB-powered. Like, like, you know, the Raspberry Pi is. But it is x86 yeah so. it's x86 and it's got pc yeah. express on it and you know people are gonna be yeah. plugging drives into it and that's true yeah like i understand i understand <laughs> i'll probably end up still buying one but i haven't swallowed my pride yet kids yeah <laughs> it'll be a fun project i still got to do that mac mini thing not mac oh, mini yeah. apple tv it looks like Your a apple mac TV. mini yeah my, yeah my hipster mac mini the og one so once I get done with that, maybe I'll come back and revisit it. So let's go ahead and start off this week with uh, the GNOME desktop and GNOME 45 doing some very mm. gnome things. Yeah, and this is really cool. So the big news for you know GNOME and those of us that use GNOME desktop, GNOME is moving from its in-house GNOME J JavaScript to standard J JavaScript models, uh, modules, or ESM. And this actually means that when you upgrade to GNOME 
version 45, all of your older GNOME 44 extensions or older won't work. And you will have to wait for the app maintainers and developers to upgrade their extensions. But fortunately, some of them ha already have fixed uh, this for the GNOME 45 migration and, and knew this was coming. And, you know, the other nice thing is actually for most extensions, this is a very simple fix. And the app maintainers can look at the link posted in our LWW show notes for instructions because it's just a few lines of code. And uh, I, w I was checking Venn because two of my extensions that I use all the time, dash to panel and dash to dock, you know, are actually some of the most popular. And dash to dock already has a GNOME 45 extension, uh, but dash to panel doesn't yet. So, and I I'm sure they will very soon. And you can go and check all the extensions, of, uh, the ones that you like to use and what GNOME um, that you can get them to work on on extensions.gnome.org. It's just the go-to for us GNOME users. And But this is actually a big deal. This is a good good thing for GNOME to, to use a more standard, you know, JavaScript format. Yeah, but they're going to have to get more creative, though, because this isn't the first <laughs> time they've broken an extension set. Yeah. So, like, the next time they break extensions, which will probably happen again in the future, <laughs> um, yeah, moving from uh, the in-house uh, GJS to PSM is yeah. probably a good idea. And uh, here's like having to like find out which ones are ported because nobody likes a hard break with anything. I understand like they got to do it. They got to do it. And, uh, I understand that. But the big issue is most people say, and by most people, the people I know who run GNOME, that GNOME by itself Vanilla out of the box gnome is basically an unusable experience for them. I cannot speak with personal experience on this. I'm just <laughs> parroting what I've been told. So this could be a problem, especially if you got some like older extensions that are just never going to get updated because you know those yeah, are out there. Those are out there. Yeah. And this this has actually kind of been a problem every time there's a new version of GNOME. It was even with GNOME 44, some of the older extensions. Well, I mean, if they're broke, not breaking stuff, they're but, taking stuff out. Yeah. <laughs> This is kind of something that the GNOME users are used to doing. It's a bit annoying, but <laughs> we do off it. Their fan base? Yeah, they're yeah. <laughs> pretty used to that. Uh, I want to know, uh, do you use vanilla GNOME? Like, drop me a comment, let me know. Mm. Or do you have a like swath of extensions? Because I know there's some diehard like, GNOME fans in the audience they're like hey this is like this is what i use and like you know you're keeping track of this stuff this i just read this and like no one's breaking something okay i mean it doesn't affect me on my xfc uh so how does and, and is this going to have any type of like knock-on effects from things that are like built on gnome like pop os right yeah yeah and, and in fact pop os has their own implementation of uh uh dot uh, dash to dock so mm. it's important for them that they'll have to do those updates themselves. So for you, what is your um, one extension you couldn't live without? Uh, dash to dock. <laughs> what does that do? <laughs> okay, so that basically puts the the uh, top panel in your access, quick access to applications and what whatnot in a in a dock on the bottom or the side of the screen. It just I. I like it because when you enter the GNOME desktop, it, it looks more like a traditional get desktop when you do that. <laughs> but aren't you supposed to like wiggle your mouse in corners and stuff? Yeah. <laughs> I have no idea how GNOME works. That, that's yeah. how I imagine GNOME works. I'm like, yeah, yeah just yeah, do, draw three smiley faces here. And that's how that, no, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Strider in chat, uh, creator of Lutris, also uses Dash to Dock. I know he does because I've seen his desktop. <laughs> yeah, I'm curious what extensions people are like, this is the only way I can use GNOME. And I don't think this is going to be a big deal because the big popular ones are going to change and the people are like, I can't use GNOME without this. They're just going to run something else, right? Yeah. <laughs> Not that big a deal. So uh, we were uh, mm -hmm. checking last night who was running Wayland and who was running X. Yeah. When we get done with, uh, <laughs> track mania which was fun because it was what really surprised me was a bunch of people had no idea and you know what that's yeah. the way it should be they're like uh 
Wayland? Sure. I might be running Wayland. We had two people I'm like, yeah, we're running Wayland. I'm like, here, type it, type this into your terminal. I'm like, no, I'm running X. Huh. But Wayland's the future. It's always perpetually been 10 years away for the last 17 years. Yeah. But <laughs> I ran into a thing earlier this week. It's a very opinionated piece. It's been making the rounds, and I've seen, I've seen it show up in a couple of places. Mm-hmm. That basically says, um, to summarize it, here, let, let me pop this up here. Uh, if you read this, your takeaway is Waylon is absolutely perfect. And X11 is going to kidnap your dog. That, that, that's how this comes across. I mean, that's what you might think when you get done with this. You're like, hmm, maybe I should switch to Wayland. And the general take from this is like, you no longer have an excuse not to use Wayland, period. I don't want to hear any ifs, ands, or triangles. Mm-hmm. And if you're designing software, it should work with Wayland. And if it breaks X, whatever, it's not important. And then we get through like the list of things, like all of your excuses are invalid these days. This is what I want to get down to, because I just want to make sure this is on the screen. Just I don't want anybody to think I'm paraphrasing anything here. Um, mm-hmm. So check this out. So if uh, yeah, screen recording, no longer a complaint. It absolutely works, as long as you ignore all the apps that no longer or don't currently support it. Yeah, so that's fun. Barrier Synergy remote desktops absolutely work. No, no, it doesn't. Uh, it's not stable. So we're, we're, we're still waiting on that to not crash. Now, the good news is, and I mean, this is uh, from last month where, you know, like, you know, we're working on it. It's going to take a while. And, you know, it's in development, but it's a long way from a solved problem. Back to this, yeah. though. Uh, accessibility tools. Joe, you know something about that. They don't exist <laughs> on Wayland. Yeah. Uh, using my uh, Zoom apps and screen readers is uh, very difficult on Wayland. <laughs> They're just not there, man. Yeah. Um, you know, this is um, brought up with the accessibility. And accessibility in general is a bit of a sad state. And, uh, you know, there's like a proposal for some things that could work. But, again, it's just not there right now. Yeah. It's not there right now. You ever heard of a guy uh, called Plagman 2? Oh, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> He's a... Uh, you know, yeah, I was just going to say, I'm, I'm following him on Twitter. <laughs> working on the Steam Deck. This is where I found out about this blog. Um, Perrier Loop Grifas. Yes. <laughs> and this is, this is the reason I was reading this in the first place. And he, he brings up the whole point. He was like, you know, platforms need to provide a mechanism and not editorialize on what use cases and apps are valid or not. Wayland Transition needs to keep breakage at zero. Anything else? And we teach a gen of third-party developers to never target Linux desktop ever again. And this is in response to what we were just talking about. That's his take on this. And it's right. Mm-hmm. It's right. This guy back here, he's got a little thing. Never break user space. Yeah. <laughs> so Linus you, Torvald said it well. <laughs> I understand if you're excited and enthusiastic <laughs> about Waylon. But to try to get the train rolling on, like, break X, like, don't care about X, when X is the big one right now, like, it's mm-hmm. got the majority share of desktops. I'd like to see real numbers on that, because I assume it still does. Mm-hmm. I can't be 100% yeah. on that. But we don't need to worry about big, bad, stinky NVIDIA, because we all have AMD cards, and now it's going to be easier mm-hmm. to overclock them. Yeah, this is exciting news. And uh, from AMD, for us AMD GPU users on Linux, yay! AMD is actually enhancing their OverDrive GPU overclocking features for us Linux users and bringing them closer to parity with the ones on Windows. Woohoo! <laughs> We've kind of been waiting for this for a while. And honestly, this demonstrates AMD's future and, and current commitment to supporting our penguins. And some of the new OverDrive features include lots of fan adjustments. There's PWM tuning, adjusting the fan curve, fan acoustic limit, fan and fan target temperatures, to name a few. And the the new features are only available to those who have newer RDNA 3 Radeon RX 7000 series cards that have just come out. And not 
it doesn't work on older generation cards. So, it, and that makes sense. They're looking forward to the future. And these changes just affect the user space interface using SysFS, not changes in the GUI tools. So this is actually, you know, for uh, the uh, third-party developers and um, app creators utilizing in, in future apps and uh, systems. So this is this is for us, the the Linux community and the developers. Oh no, no, it's for <laughs> Mister <laughs> Mister Moneybags Commandon with his seven thousand series GPU showing up tomorrow. Yay! <laughs> Awesome Strider. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I mean, you know, it's like little quality of life, things like that. Uh, mm -hmm. Will things I was like, oh, that's really neat because like we don't normally have access to stuff. But if you're coming over from Windows, you expect that just to be there. Uh, who remembers word processors? <laughs> I do. <laughs> it wasn't the first. For, I I was. Doing, you learn typing on word processors in junior high, but I learned to actually type earlier than that on traditional typers, typewriters. <laughs> typers. This guy named Brendan decided to make this. It's this is beautiful. Muse. <laughs> Muse. It's based on an Olympia Traveler Deluxe. Woohoo. Right? Now, what does Muse I remember say? seeing those actually. I think one of my teachers had one. I gotta imagine, man. Uh, <laughs> the most unusual sentence extractor. Mm -hmm. Talk about an interesting project to go through, because the, this is uh, the inspiration, like one of those, and that was considered a portable typewriter back in the day. Let me carry around with you. How times have changed. So <laughs> this is the initial concept. We're gonna have a keyboard with an e-ink display. I'm like, okay, it's kind of neat. Yeah. 3D printed. I think it looks really nice, doesn't it? It's beautiful. It's beautiful retro. It's it's very 60s modern, which I'm all in into. <laughs> so, very nice. <laughs> Dude built his own keyboard. I got mad respect for that. And here's what I get even extra. You see this keyboard? Do you see that? Mm -hmm. yeah. Silent. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Silent. That's somebody who types a lot. <laughs> And it's a nice looking keyboard too. Yeah, it's beautiful. Now this was uh the the initial idea was to do the e ink, and I'm like, oh, well, this is gonna be kind of diff difficult because then you don't have a backlight. And I'm like, I always want to have the lights on. And he said, fortunately for me, my e ink, e -ink display died, so we got an LCD touchscreen. So that's what has been upgraded to, which works out a little bit better. Look at that uh, foam. I mean, this this is completely homebrew, <laughs> and I like seeing something that's completely homebrew, but it looks... Yeah, it looks professional. It looks right. like you could just buy it at the store. Craftsmanship. Yeah, beautiful craftsmanship. And the reason we're talking about it, this is all powered by Raspberry Pi. Yeah. Yeah. Woohoo! <laughs> Yay! I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, I will have a link to the original project, unfortunately... This was a, what was this, an R Raspberry Pi on the Reddit. Uh, there's not a guide to how to stick it together, but they, he did go through the trouble of uh, putting together a bill of materials. Partsless. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's really cool. And, and he actually said in one of the articles, uh, the developer, uh, Brendan, you know, his need for a simple machine to type on, you know, which is away from distractions of modern media, like, the YouTubes and social media and video games. And I I completely understand that, Brendan, and this is actually one of the reasons why I often use old computers to write show notes on for our shows, <laughs> is, you know, because it keeps me away from those distractions and I can't play modern games on it. <laughs> Although I can play old school games, but still, it gets me focused on just typing. And 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 <laughs> one of the neat features, I forgot to mention, this thing does cloud saves. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he uses uh, um, the CAD, the CAD, uh, what do you call it? I've used it before. <laughs> not not Guy CAD. Uh, Kai, <laughs> CAD, I'm forgetting the name. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's, it allows you to uh, 3D print online. 
I think it's neat. All that's going to be in our show notes. Go check it out, even though we've ran for 39 minutes. Uh oh. <laughs> which means we got to roll some credits. Thanks for sticking with us for the long <laughs> run. We'll be back next week. But till then, oh, I need to thank everybody. Hey, yeah. if you like what we do, head over to linuxgamecast.com, smash that support button. I want to thank Don for 34 yeah. month resub. Woohoo. Thank you, Don Twitch, M. Bezo Bucks and uh, everybody else. Yeah. If you like what we do, patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. Come hop on our Discord. Come go watch the, uh, see what happens when we try to take professional broadcast video equipment and use it on a desktop with OBS because that video is up right now for our patrons. <laughs> nice. Along <laughs> with a gang of other things. Yes, Joe? Yay! I just found it. It's Tinkercad. I Tinkercad. couldn't remember the name of it. All right. I've used it before to do some 3D prints. I think now we it's won't great. have that. Like, it was Tinkercad all along. Yeah, and it's got a nice note-taking system and everything there we go. in it. Yeah. All right. Cool, everybody. Mm -hmm. Credits. Yay! Aw, thank you for all of you in our chat. We've got our advisors, our Theron, who's in chat. <laughs> And our executive producers. <sighs> Can't name them all. <laughs> and our Chicago Kicks people. <laughs> Super Dust Out Empty. <laughs> our Sea Monsters. System T, DS, and Joe. <laughs> our Death Notes. Lots of them. And Fox Dog, Dirty Dean. Our Chairlings. <sighs> Everyone that I can't mention, I can't read their names because, well, the, the font's too small for me to read that quickly. <laughs> Beautiful people. Thanks for hanging out. If you get a chance, come play with us. We'll be back yes. on Friday. Absolutely. For Track Mania, we got a new thing on the server now, which is really fancy where we don't have to restart the server. Yes. Super that's cool. that's That was cool then that <laughs> you did that. We'll be there. 7.30. And tune in tomorrow. Jordan will probably be back with uh, Baldur's Gate. Sometimes it's even multiplayer with one empty. Bye, everybody. See you next nice. week. Bye, everyone. Love you all. <laughs> Where's my button? <laughs> there it is.